So you do have that one very famous picture of him at Reading where he's doing that jump in the air. He's got his feet kicked mm-hmm. back a little bit. Um, do you ever take in that photo? Yeah, I mean, you know, I remember most of them. I mean, sometimes you don't know you got something until later on you got the film back. My favorite photo from that gig is the one where he's just standing there looking straight at me. And it was just, because he just sort of turned and was like, in between a song, and was like, hey guys, I was sitting next to Mark Arm, and uh, he's just, everything okay, you know, kind of thing. And we were like, yeah, go play, man. You know, but it's, it's a really, yeah, it's a beautiful kind of intimate, endearing shot. 100%, yeah. So you mentioned now that you were with Mark Arm on the side of the Reading stage. Mm-hmm. Who else was there from Seattle to witness that? Do you remember? Uh, well, I mean, Mark was playing in Mud Honey earlier in the day, so it was on all pretty much all Seattle lineup, Mark and Mark Lanigan and Streaming Trees and the Melvins, Bill Seven, and I can't remember who else. Yeah, yeah. And what was their reaction to the Reading Show Nirvana's performance? Oh, like, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, everybody's blown away by it. How was that experience in general, the Reading Nirvana experience? I mean, it, yeah, Reading was uh, just a little bit overwhelming, honestly. I mean, when you go and you look at a list of the photographers in the press tent and it's 96, you know, so, uh, and everybody gets their five minutes or two minutes or whatever out in the pit. I mean, Nirvana pulled me on stage, so I was up on stage the whole time for their show. But uh, for some of the other bands, yeah, you just get a few minutes. And um, and it was just, yeah, it was just, so, like, I had never really experienced anything quite like that before. Just in all the sea of, sea of scraggly kids and mud and, yeah. It was crazy. Did you talk to the band prior to the show? Do you know how they were feeling about it? Uh, I didn't see... I No, I actually didn't run into them before the show. Um, it was just Alex, their tour manager, pulled me up on stage, and then there was Kurt in his wheelchair, and we said hi. And, but, yeah, I, I didn't see them. Did you know he was going to come out in that wheelchair? I didn't know that, no. So there he was with Everett True pull, pushing him yeah. out. And what was your reaction to seeing that? I was like, okay, what's going on here? And then they kind of ever kind of explained the joke and I took, took a few really it was very dark but I got a few pictures because of the rumors of uh, drug abuse and blah 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 and the baby and the not uh, that that's the, was the whole thing behind the joke of him coming out in the wheelchair so there were those expectations of like can Nirvana pull off a show this size and are they you know is Kurt strong enough and blah 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 so yeah um I think, you know, I mean, just those of us who were there were like, oh, this is great. We're lucky to be here, and this is amazing, and yeah, I've never seen anything like this. So after the show, well, what did you guys end up doing? Oh, we went back to the Ramada Inn and got really, really drunk and closed the hotel bar down, and, and it was just absolutely, really insane, yeah, like, everybody collapsing in hotel rooms and wandering in hallways, and who was that? Do you remember? Oh, just, just, you know, my friend Steve Mack from That Petrol Emotion and, and just, uh, Bob Whitaker, of course, up to his shenanigans. I'm not any tour manager. Mm-hmm. With a show that incredible, was it, was it hard to stay focused on, on the job? I, I mean, I think sometimes I, the, the where I didn't stay focused on the job was before and after the shows. I should have taken more, like, sort of backstage and whatnot stuff, but I was also a little bit of an alcoholic at the time. So, uh, you know, uh, it was either one hand and it was either, like, hard to juggle a camera and a drink, so yeah. <laughs> no worries. So was there any one particular um, song or moment from that show that sticks out to you? Um, you know, I mean, definitely when they did Smells Like Teen Spirit and the whole audience was sing along with the chorus or, you know, Come As You Are. And sing along. Yeah, it was really about the, the audience singing along with the band. So when did you get to develop those photos uh, you took from the uh, show? Yeah, probably about two weeks later, I'd say. Yeah. And when you saw them, were you uh, were you happy with what you? Yeah, had? yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a dark show, you know, so I was a little bit concerned, and uh, but I, I was happy with with what I got. Yeah. So when you're in front of a huge crowd like that, um, do you? Is it often you get those intimate little moments when you're in front of so many people? You know, it's hard. Yeah, I try and look for those, but it can be difficult to get, like, sort of intimate moments. Um, yeah, you have to know that sometimes the most important shots are not 
the shots in between the shots. It's not when it's not when the you know doing the 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 thing at the microphone. You know, if you just if you're always concentrate like this close up of the microphone and the singer, you're just you're just losing all the rest of it. So sometimes it's about the the audience. Sometimes it's about the 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 space that they're in. Um, and you know, wide angle can be as intimate as telephoto. I mean, you just have to, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, have that sensitivity, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, these shows, the grunt shows that you're famous for, I mean, they were chaotic. Did, did you ever get hit by somebody when you were uh, trying to take a Yeah, photo? I got my flash knocked off a few times. I had plastic shoes, so it would get ripped off. And, and um, yeah, I had to threaten a bouncer now and then with a camera. <laughs> Fuck all that kid, man. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, but it was generally, I was just good fun. Just going back to Nirvana for a second, uh, their live shows were legendary, um, you know, for various reasons. Was do you remember by any chance like the first show you saw of theirs where he was like, "Boy, this is a great band." That first or second show I saw at the University of Washington ballroom, I was just yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, the really seeing them later on, seeing them at Reading in front of forty five thousand people, I mean, that's really when it cemented like, wow, this they can command like this massive stage and this you know sea of people and i was like okay yeah this is some serious shit here yeah i myself i've done a little bit of concert photography as well um i've I've done mostly concert videography but you know it's more or less kind of the same vibe um and sometimes you're enjoying the show and you know you're taking the photos you're taking the videos and you want to stay focused on the performance but you're actually enjoying the performance at the same time for you has it ever happened where like you kind of got lost in the moment enjoying the show instead of actually taking the photographs that you, you intended to. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, certainly, you know, I mean, you you know, it's there, there, even a 45-minute show or even a 20-minute show sometimes can be long. If you, you know, you can't, especially back in the film days, I mean, film was precious, so you weren't photographing, like, the entire show. So, yeah. but, yeah, you had to be careful that you didn't get too lost and and not beyond to miss the moment yeah but yeah no i mean and that you know and i think that's also what made my photography somewhat unique is that um i'd say 75 percent of the time i'm not really even looking through the viewfinder so um so you know i i'm i moved to the music i got into the front i got i wanted to make it and it feel like you felt the experience of being at one of these shows and what it was like uh and and so you know if i was just to go out there and stand rigid and try and do the perfect shot you know it just wasn't going to work out that way so it's really about it was about being loose and and looking for new angles and and just you know kind of like just what the music was doing you were shooting analog because there's no digital at the time how did you, if you weren't looking at the viewfinder, how did you know if it was in focus when you were taking? Well, if you're using wider le- angle lenses, you you know, I mean, um, it, it, it'll you have depth of field, so it'll it'll mm-hmm. a flash, so it'll it'll come into play, and you you kind of pre-focus. You're you know you're you're four feet away, so you set it at four feet, and I can pretty much shoot from anywhere here and you know with a with a 24 millimeter at f5.6 it's going to be in focus i still do that i mean that's still how i operate with t- photographing my kids or whatever um with a leica i just yeah i just shoot yeah. because you know, otherwise you're just mm, yeah here you take the fun out of it a little bit right well it's not even fun it's the it's the magic it's kind of sort of I, 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 but i know my gear so well that i know what that angle is going to do Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what you see, make sure to subscribe for more. All the videos on this channel are original. I'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Lots more to come.